You either hate this trade or you despise the trade. That is the overwhelming reaction to this blockbuster deal. The Clippers have all the star power that a team can hope to have, but they have two of the most unreliable superstars in the history of the game. James Harden and Russell Westbrook are two of the worst playoff performers from a top 75 player that we've ever seen. We're so used to them underperforming that we expect the worst from them. But what about the other side of this debate? With all this talent that they have, it would be foolish to not consider this team to be in title contention. So if that's the case, what can this team do to deliver this franchise its first ever championship? That is something that the Clippers coaching staff is working hard to figure out. It will certainly take them some time to find a way to make everyone coexist on the court. Although they don't know exactly the right formula or system to make this all work, they do have the right idea. Head coach Tyron Liu mentioned something very important that everyone's going to have to do if they want any chance of winning the title. This is what he said to reporters shortly after the trade, quote, Sacrifice is going to be the biggest thing. Four guys from LA, and four guys that have done a lot in their careers, so they understand, and they've talked about just winning a championship. That's all we're focused on. It's going to take a lot of sacrifice, whether it's shots, whether it's minutes. They're willing to do that, end of quote. That is most definitely the key word, sacrifice. Two of the most statistically dominant players are going to have to sacrifice big time in order for this experiment to work. Is Russell Westbrook willing to accept the bench role? Is James Harden willing to be the team's third scoring option? If they're willing to have an open mind and accept whatever role they need to fill, then this season could go very well for this team. The main issue is that there are a lot of ifs that they'll have to answer. It's honestly too many to count. If Kawhi Leonard can stay healthy, if Paul George doesn't get hurt, if Russell Westbrook is happy to come off the bench, if James Harden doesn't forget how to play basketball in the playoffs. It only takes one of those things to go wrong for this experiment to blow up on everyone's face. But let's assume that this team can stay healthy for the postseason. After all, Kawhi Leonard re-emerges as a Terminator every five years. What kind of season do these players need to have to expect a championship run in the spring? Personally, I'm not too worried about Kawhi and Paul George. It's how James Harden can make this team better. He's the one who seems to carry a backpack full of explosives every time the playoffs come around, just waiting to self-destruct. We're all worried about him. As far as his numbers, we know he can score whenever he wants. We know that he's one of the best playmakers in the game today. He finished first in assists last season, and he was second in 2021. He's already reinvented his game as a more traditional point guard. However, he will always be a scorer first. That's how he's wired, and that's the biggest value that he brings to any team. But this team doesn't even need him to score 20 points every game. Will he be okay with averaging 17 and 10 for the season? I've been thinking a lot about which great player from the past went through a similar situation and helped their team win the title. If there's one player he can look up to, I would say it's Tiny Archibald. Like James Harden, there was no one who could fill up a box score as he could during his time. We're talking about a player who is still the only one to lead the league in scoring and assist in the same season. He averaged 34 points and 11.4 assists in 1973. Those are crazy numbers. But a series of injuries brought him down to earth and he needed to accept a limited role when he was traded to the Boston Celtics. And that's exactly what he did. He was willing to be the fourth leading scorer behind Larry Bird, Robert Parrish, and Cedric Maxwell. He was in charge of bringing the ball up the floor and setting up the offense. In the end, the Celtics won the title in 1981, and we can safely say that they couldn't do it without him. I think James Harden needs to do something similar. Don't mess up what this team already has. Don't expect the Clippers to make you the system. You got to fit in. You are not the same player from your Houston Rockets days. Kawhi and Paul George should remain their primary scoring options. Westbrook is bringing so much value with the energy he's bringing to the games. He needs to focus on 
setting everyone up and scoring when he needs to. Since he doesn't have to score so often, maybe he can exert a little bit of energy by making hustle plays and setting a screen or two for his teammates. As far as his playoff blunders, there's one encouraging sign for all Clippers fans. Kawhi Leonard made an interesting comment about what Tyron Lue said about sacrificing, and I think he has the right idea on how to approach these games. He said this, quote, I think we still have to come in kind of like with a selfish mindset, meaning we can't look over our shoulder and say this guy's gonna win the game, or this guy's gonna win the game for us. We still have to step on that floor like we are out there by ourselves, and from there, it is gonna be a sacrifice. It's only one basketball, we just gotta figure it out from there." End of quote. I think he's low-key preparing for the moment when James Harden doesn't show up. If you're his teammate, you can't wait for him to carry the team in the biggest moments. You just have to take it yourself. That's something that Joel Embiid should have done in the last two seasons. I think he was waiting for his star teammate to give him some kind of help, and he was frustrated when he didn't deliver. I think Kawhi is trying to say that he's not going to make that same mistake. He's going to play his game and take over. He already has a proven track record of coming up big in the playoffs. If he has to average 30 points and let his teammates look quote unquote bad, then that's what he's going to have to do. The biggest thing that holds the super team back is that the players are scared of stepping on anyone's toes. Sometimes you have to be selfish, as Kawhi mentioned, and just play your game. Harden's finally playing with someone that can hold it together in the playoffs, and this could be beneficial for him. He might not be too happy at times with the low numbers he will record, but it's for his own good. At this point, it's common knowledge that he can't help a team win the title as a clear-cut leader of the team, or even as the co-star. If he's out of everyone's way, then the Clippers might be better off. For the sake of his own legacy, he just needs to prove that he can help a team win and not completely ruin a franchise. That's how low the bar is at this point. How a title will affect his legacy while being the third or fourth scoring option is a conversation we can have if that ever comes. Honestly, it's hard to envision him ever hoisting the Larry O'Brien trophy, but this is going to be all up to him. What about you all? Do you have any hope that the Clippers can pull this off? Is it realistic to expect a title from them? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.